Our topic today is DNA on PAA, where PAA is the abbreviation for polyacrylamide gels. First, I will talk about the basics in electrophoresis of nucleate acids and I display the advantages and disadvantages of agarose and polyacrylamide gels. I will present the prime system and all chemicals or buffers you need. I list the methods and show examples of gels. A short digression concerning horizontal electrophoresis and possible detection devices will then end the webinar. Electrophoresis is the migration and separation of loaded molecules in an electric field. Therefore, the two important parameters are current and voltage. With raising section of the gel, the current is split among more ions. Due to this fact, the current must be set higher. Like lightning in nature, voltage must get higher to reach and influence distant ions. To summarize, voltage is a parameter of the migration length. Having applied the ideal electrical field, there are more factors present that influence the migration speed. The most important is for sure the molecular size. The bigger, the more charges are pulled towards the electrode. However, the sieving abilities of the gel matrix is counteracting. Additionally, the right buffer composition can influence the migration speed too. But let's take an intensive view on the sieving abilities. Agarose is a polysaccharide from glucose and 3,6-anhydrogalactose, seen here. In solution heated, two agarose chains uh, curl together, like here, and with more energy you put into your system, the, these curls organize each other to strands. Depending on the concentration you used, let's say 1%, 1.5%, these build a matrix of smaller or bigger pores. On average, these pores are 100 nanometers in diameter. Nucleate acid with approximately 300 base pairs would migrate without sieving in agarose gels. Therefore, these gels are inappropriate for small DNA and RNA. Uh, polyacrylamide is a product of acrylamide and methylene bisacrylamide, in short, bis. DTT and APS is added, but is only acting as radical starter for the reaction. This is shown here. You get long acrylamide chains. These are concentrated, dependent, cross-linked with bis. The average pore size is 10 nanometers, perfect for small DNA and RNA. An often underrated factor is electroendosmosis, or in short, EEO. On the loaded surface here, uh, with agarose, mainly this is glass or plastic. The charge of the surface leads to deprotonation of the residues in the gel matrix. So you have sulfates or pyruvates inside. The DNA A is deflected and as counterforce, these Protons bind to water and in the opposite direction, the hydronium is moving towards the cathode of the gel. This is called the electroendosmotic flow. This flow can be so strong that it leads to a rupture of the gel matrix. This effect and the electroosmotic flow together lead to a diffuse bands, like shown here, with a quite slow migration speed. 
to avoid this uh, EEO, you can buy low EEO agar roses that are uh, better purified, let's say, and um, the only problem of this product is it is quite expensive due to this purification step. There are no side groups in polyacrylamide gels and therefore you do not have a pro deprotonization. So the electroendosmotic effect fails to appear. PA gels win over agarose by therefore a fast migration and a very sharp banding. For DNA on PA gels, there is no need for a special equipment. Every vertical protein electrophoresis chamber will do. For example, our prime chamber shown here with a 100% leak-free, unique and easy to handle closure. It's like a snap-in mechanism. You can decide if you want to cast your own gels. You could do this, for example, with our caster here on the left. Or we recommend to use precast gels, like our TG Prime gels. Why? Because you have reproducible results due to the fact that we have a quality control and every gel should be the same. But the even better argument for using them is that we have a huge variety we offer. Uh, especially you can also buy gradient gels. What this has as effect I will show you in the next slides. The only thing you need additionally are your reagents. The first you need is your running buffer. There is um, the best one, I would say, is the normal TBE buffer you use for agarose gels. You use them as well for the polyacrylamide gels. Then you need a sample buffer. This is quite new in our portfolio and it's 3x. So um, you add one part to two parts of your sample and it's specially designed to have the best result within a vertical well, so the DNA inside your solution, inside your sample, is best organized, best um, loaded with this buffer. And the third one you need is a, yeah, a staining or a visualization of your bonds after electrophoresis. And um, you have to remember that when you use precast gels or you even cast your own gels, it is uh, not very uh, good to cast ethidium bromide into the gel. This is quite easy with agarose, with polyacrylamide gels. This is not that simple. So there is an idea to, on the one hand, put your stain into your sample directly or after electrophoresis you put your gel into um, a dyeing bath. So you just lay it into a bath with water and the stain because ethidium bromide is a cancerogen. I would recommend to use this one here, our DNA Stain Clear G that is not cancerogen and you can decide to use the bath and uh, you don't have to be afraid to affect yourself. Both the bath and the direct um, pipetting into your sample, you use a concentration of 1 to 10,000 of this stain. Here is the method. This is quite simple. You don't have to cook any agarose. You just mix your sample buffer and your sample together, one and plus two parts. Then you denature five minutes for 95 degrees. You only do this for samples if you have pre uh, um, or ready to use markers. You don't need to do this uh, step here. Then you mount your gel. You fill the chamber up with TBE 
load then your samples and start the electrophoresis. You have two possibilities. On the one hand, you can use constantly 35 milliamps. This is a quite fast run. Or you use a constant 150 volts run. Um, this uh, is lasting a little bit longer. Both is quite well, so decide what you want to do. Next step is the staining in the bath. So you remove the gel from your cassette or from, from your glass plates and put it directly into the bath for 15 minutes. Then you de-stain with water for 10 minutes to get rid of the background. Afterwards, you take a picture. So a quite fast method, I think. Here we have uh, some pictures from our gels. So I used all gels we have um, in our portfolio, um, some gradients, some homogenic gels. And what I did on each gel, I applied three markers, a 50 base pair, 100 base pair, and one kilo base pair marker, and I adjusted them um, to the 3000 line so that you can see um, where you spread or where you uh, decrease the resolution of your, of your sample or your marker. So you can see that you can easily decide um, which region is uh, interesting for me, what do I want to spread or not. So as example, if you want, if you have a, a quite small molecule, so between 50 and 500 base pairs, I would recommend, um, let's say, uh, the 4 to 12, because you have a huge resolution here, separation in between these two. And if you are interested in even higher um, DNA, then I would perhaps decide to use the 8% because you have a spreading here in the upper part. So decide what you want to do. Here are some examples from satisfied customers from us. On the left side, you see that you have a resolution down to, yeah, they showed 30 base pairs, but I'm sure you could uh, easily see 50 base pairs um, of difference. And the next picture shows the difference in resolution of an agarose versus a polyacrylamide gel. And to my eyes, I love the PAA even more, the sharp bands straight without any smiling effect or else. Um, and the third picture, this is a disadvantage of uh, this system. I always, uh, I, I want to talk about disadvantages as well. Um, here a customer showed that uh, you have a limitation in the volume and the total amount in your sample when you use PAA for DNA electrophoresis. Um, you see that if you decrease the volume and the micrograms you have in your in your um, sample, you get rid of these strange effects. So this uh, U-like shape you have is an effect of um, a high volume, so uh, you loaded more than 15 microliters, and these artifacts you have inside here, this smear-like appearance, this is because you have a sample with uh, too high um, concentration of your DNA inside. So here is our recommendation. Only use a maximum of 15 microliters per well and with a maximum concentration of 10 microgram total DNA. The short uh, trip to the horizontal DNA electrophoresis, I show you first um, the most important um, methods you do, but you in nowadays you only have two left that are sometimes done by researchers or, or companies. These two above here are not important anymore. I will talk about them uh, in the next slides. Just note, because these are the yeah, let's say classical DNA fingerprinting techniques. So you want to see um, small amounts of DNA and therefore you only have a possibility to stay in silver or fluorescence to have a low um, 
concentration uh, that you can detect and because of um, if you use native um, page uh, uh, polyacrylamide gels then you have to be aware that AT rich fragments migrate slower in the gel why is it like that yeah because A and T just have two little arms and the other ones have three arms so you have two-third of your um, of minus um, that is migrating towards your electrode the equipment for these methods uh, we have at server as well. This is our Blue Horizon, a flatbed chamber with a cool plate. Uh, with this equipment you use so-called clean gels. These are uh, film-backed gels polymerized before with buffer strips that are soaked with uh, the appropriate buffer where, and you lay your electrodes on these buffers and additionally and very practically is that you have these precast wells inside so you don't have to uh, apply any uh, wicks, any uh, loading um, aids or whatever. You just pipe it in and go. Um, to these gels uh, you buy the appropriate buffer kit I show you now. So for the RAPD, this is an example of some, and um, you use it to show after a PCR with a very special and short primer um, to separate or to, to uh, yeah, compare different species with each other. So here these are bacteria. The method for this is quite easy easy. You have your clean gels and everything that has this little star up here is included in the so-called DELECT buffer kit you can buy at server for the RAPD method. You rehydrate your clean gel first with a rehydration buffer for 90 minutes. Afterwards you apply a contact cooling fluid on the cooling plate of the Blue Horizon and you mount your gel. Afterwards you soak the electrode wicks with an anode and cathode buffer also included in the set and you load your samples and start the electrophoresis. For this method you have a three-phase uh, electrogram uh, with different voltage and what yeah, times. Then you do a silver stain or a fluorescent stain. You can decide what you want to do. This is an example of an SSCP. Uh, it is quite similar to the other method, but you uh, use a special primer in, in PCR. So this is the 16S RNA primer and uh, the method, the application is the same, only the primer is a little bit different and this was also yeah, the first, let's say, uh, test for being father or not. This is the method. It is the absolutely same despite of the step of your electrophoresis. Here you can decide if you want to show a native or a denaturing um, sample application. Um, for each one you have a different electrograms but the rest is absolutely similar. If you want to perform SSCP you buy this DNA fragment analysis kit together with your clean gels. To document or detect your gels to make photographs of them there is a huge variety of systems you can buy from other companies or from Serva of course. So this is always depending on what you do and what you use for staining or labeling or fluorescent staining. So we have a wide variety from UV uh, to LED technology from big machines to very tiny ones. So the best thing would be you tell us what you want to do what method you have and 
we will decide for you or give you recommendation what is the best of these imaging systems uh, you should use for your application.